Assassin. All right, welcome back to the Aperture Assassin channel. I'm your host, Liam Douglas. In this episode, I want to talk to you about avoiding gas. Now, gas is also known as gear acquisition syndrome. And what we mean by that is you shouldn't be the kind of photographer that goes out every year and buys the latest body made by the manufacturer that you've chose to shoot with, whether it's Canon, Fuji, Sony, Nikon, it doesn't matter. Most new photographers, and especially photography students, don't realize that the most important part of a photographer's setup, aside from their own knowledge and skill, is their glass, not the body. Now, what I mean by that is, in order to get the best possible images and to avoid gear acquisition syndrome, you should be concentrating on buying high-quality lenses for the camera body that you have. Now, to give you an example here, I have the Canon RF 50mm 1.2L USM lens. This is one of Canon's luxury lenses. That's what the L stands for. And this is one of the highest quality lenses that Canon makes. Now, for years, I had the EF version of this lens when I was shooting with Canon DSLRs. And it was a great lens, but it did have some shortcomings. And myself and a lot of other photographers were confused as to why Canon never released a version 2 or a version 3. They've made the same EF 50mm 1.2L USM lens for, I believe, over 10 years. And they've never updated it, even though it's not as optically perfect as it should be for its price point. Now, this one is as close to optically perfect as you can get. Canon really knocked it out of the park when they made this particular lens. Now, the next lens that I have here is the Canon 24 to 105 F4 LIS USM lens. This one has image stabilization. It is a four aperture throughout, even though it's a medium telephoto from 24 millimeters to 105 millimeters. This is a fantastic lens. It works great for shooting portraits. It works great for shooting landscapes at 24 millimeters. It's just an all around fantastic lens. Now, I don't want you to think that you always have to buy the most expensive lenses to get the best quality. Now, let me give you an example here. This is the Canon 40 millimeter STM pancake lens. And as you can see, it's one of Canon's silver band lenses or what are traditionally considered Canon's lowest quality lenses. Canon, for the most part, makes three series of lenses. They make their silver band, which are their low end and expensive lenses, they make their gold band USM, which I don't have any of those anymore. I used to have the EF85 1.8, but I've since sold it and bought a different 85 millimeter in the RF mount. And then, of course, they make their red band L or luxury lenses. Now, in their tilt shift lenses, they do also make a green band. And I'm not sure why the re what the reasoning is behind that. But getting back to my point. Even though this is one of the silver band lenses, and when I bought this lens several years back brand new, it was like 140 bucks or something like that, this lens makes amazing images. It is a 40 millimeter pancake lens, f2.8 aperture, and it is fairly optically perfect. It's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn close for the price point. And it's not the only one. Canon later made a 24 millimeter uh, STM pancake lens for the APS-C EF mount bodies. That is also a fantastic low cost lens. And a lot of you, if you're a Canon shooter and you bought a kit, you may be familiar with the Canon 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. That is another silver band lens. It's a reasonably inexpensive lens, but it does make fantastic images. And I think Canon does that on purpose. Even though these are their lowest end lenses, their least expensive, they want to at least have two or three really good lenses at each price point. So I think that's why certain members of their silver band lenses are really good lenses and then other ones like the 75 to 300 are absolute garbage. Now, you don't have to buy the most expensive lenses for your body. Now, granted here, I have two of the L lenses from the RF mount, and these aren't cheap. Now, the thing that's odd is the 24 to 105 F4 LIS in the RF mount is the same price as it is in the EF mount at about $1,000 new, where 
The 50 millimeter 1.2, the EF mount is about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars new, and the RF mount one is about twenty three hundred dollars new. Why the drastic difference in price? I have no idea. Just being honest with you. But you don't have to buy the luxury lenses from your camera body manufacturer, whether it's Canon, Nikon, Sony, what have you. There are some great third-party options. Tamron is one of them, especially in their G2 series of lenses. They've gotten really good in quality. And Sigma makes some phenomenal lenses, especially in their art series. I happen to have the 24 or uh, 12 to 24 millimeter f4 art lens and the EF mount from Sigma, and it's a fantastic lens to use for landscapes or real estate work, which is what I do full time. I shoot real estate in the Atlanta area. Now, most of the time when I shoot real estate, I use the Rokinon 14 millimeter f2.8 RF mount autofocus model. Uh, to shoot most of my real estate because 14 millimeters is nice and wide. You don't get any kind of weird distortion at that, at that focal or at that distance, uh, focal distance. Um, but every once in a while, I'll shoot a property that has an extremely short backyard, say five or maybe 10 feet. And if it's a two-story house, it's darn near impossible to get a full rear of the house shot where you can see the entire house with my 14 millimeter. So in those cases, I'll grab the 12 to 24 with the adapter out of my car and I'll put that on and I'll get that rear shot of the entire house. Um, and it works fantastic for that is a super high quality lens. Now the Sigma art lenses are not cheap either, but when you compare them to your first party lenses from Canon or whoever, they are generally considerably cheaper. And a lot of Sigma's art lenses are just as good in quality as the Canon or Nikon or Fuji or Sony lenses. So you're not necessarily getting an inferior set of glass for a lower price point. So keep that in mind. You don't have to break the bank, especially if you're just starting out or you're a hobbyist or an amateur. You don't have to buy the most expensive lenses on the market. But keep in mind, the lenses are the most important part of your setup as far as your camera gear. The body is non-consequential. Uh, a decent body. The only time I recommend people upgrade their body is if your current body is holding you back. If there's something in the newer body, technology-wise, that you really need to get the kind of shots you need, whether it's frames per second or better low-light performance, whatever that may be, that's fine. But don't fall into this trap of buying a new camera body every year just because the manufacturer releases a new model. I'm shooting this video on my EOS RP, which is a fantastic full-frame entry-level camera. It's great for shooting these videos. I, I do them in 1080p. I don't do them in 4K, so I don't care that it has a 4K crop because I don't shoot my videos in 4K. And I still have my EOS RP. Now, both of these cameras are nearly are about two years old. The R is two years old technology-wise. It came out in late 2018, and the RP came out in early 2019. So it's almost two-year-old technology now as well. Now, I am planning to upgrade to the R6, hopefully this holiday season or the first of the year. I haven't figured that out yet. And the main reason why I'm doing it is not because my R and RP aren't good cameras, but because I would like to have the 10 to or 12 to 20 frames per second that the R6 offers for when I do on occasion shoot sports. I don't do it a lot. I used to have a 1DX Mark II, and I traded that in and got a medium format Fuji. Um, because I didn't shoot that much in the way of sports. I used to, but I don't as much anymore. But I would still like to have that option should I have somebody, a client, want to hire me to shoot sports for them, whether it's for a local high school team or a college team or a professional sports team. Um, it would be nice to have a camera that's capable of 20 frames per second. None of my current bodies can do that. So I am looking to do that. I'll probably keep the bodies I currently have because I really love the R and the RP. Granted, they only have a single memory card slot, but they still get the job done and create fantastic images. So keep that in mind. Don't play the keeping up with the Joneses game when it comes to your camera body. Don't succumb to gas or gear acquisition syndrome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I want to thank you for watching. Please hit the like and share this video and hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell to be notified when the next video drops. And I will see you 
next time. <laughs>